The first thing I did was kick my stepmom and stepbrothers out of the house. They begged me to let them live there for a few months until they found a place to live. But I wanted them out immediately and moved all their stuff to a local motel for two months. Hey, I'm Jennifer. I love cooking. It's like my own magic potion of flavors and happiness. My dad, who's a cool truck driver, introduced me to this awesome world of cooking. We'd spend lots of time in the kitchen, making delicious stuff and having a blast. I never got to know my mom because she died of cancer when I was young. It was just me and my dad. But my dad was probably lonely. He was very friendly with everyone and loved to turn strangers into friends. So, my dad, being the amazing guy he is, decided to get remarried. He met Karen, a waitress at a truck stop, and they hit it off. After two months of dating, calling and texting each other, my dad decided to get married and make things better for both of us. I thought it would be super cool to have a new family. But turns out, Karen isn't a fan of my cooking adventures. Our kitchen, once filled with laughter, turned kinda stressful. Hey Karen, I thought I'd give cooking a try tonight. How about helping out? Cooking? Oh honey, that's cute. But don't you think it's best if I handle this? You might mess things up. Oh, no worries, Karen. I found this great recipe, and I thought it would be a nice surprise for everyone. I'll just follow the instructions. Surprise? We don't need surprises. Stick to what you're good at, dear. Leave the cooking to someone who knows what they're doing. I want to help, Karen. I've been practicing, and I'm sure I can do it. Let me at least try. Try? I'm not sure this is the time for experimenting, Jennifer. Just step aside and let me handle it. We wouldn't want a disaster, would we? I can do it, Karen. I don't need you to take over everything. I want to be part of this family, too. Family? Sweetie, you'll never fit in completely. Just accept that and spare us all the trouble. After that conversation, I never had any quality time in the kitchen. I wanted to be a chef when I finished high school, but my stepmom discouraged me from applying to a cooking school. She told me that I couldn't even make scrambled eggs. A few years after the marriage, my stepmom said her two sons from a previous marriage were going to live with us. Her sons, Doug and Jim, were teenagers and liked to talk loudly and play loud music. They were always disrespectful to me and never turned down the music when I asked them to. I was quietly studying to be a teacher and needed to pass all the tests. Finally, my stepmom heard about all my conflicts with my stepbrothers and told me to move out. I told her I didn't have a place to go, and she said it wasn't her problem. I took a student loan and moved out the following month and rented a small apartment close to the campus. My dad was mostly on the road and thought everything was going well at home, but he didn't know the extent of my problems. This went on for a few years, and when it was time for me to graduate, I invited my dad, my stepmom, and stepbrothers to attend the graduation ceremony. Afterwards, we had a celebratory dinner at a local restaurant, and when my dad was not looking, presented me with the $400 dinner tab. She said since I would be making the big bucks, then I should be paying. Since I didn't want to cause a scene, I paid the bill. My stepbrothers just laughed. I found work as an elementary school teacher and met a fellow teacher, Tom, who shared the same interest with me in cooking and music. We eventually talked about marriage and I introduced Tom to my stepmom, who I thought would be happy for me. Karen, this is Tom, my fiance. Oh dear, another one of your experiments. Tom, brace yourself. Jennifer's cooking is a disaster waiting to happen. Actually, Tom loves my cooking. We enjoy making meals together. It's true, Karen. Jennifer is an amazing cook. We've had some delicious adventures in the kitchen. Well, I doubt that. A good cook doesn't just happen. Maybe you should let someone more experienced handle the kitchen. Save yourselves from disappointment. Karen, I appreciate your concern, but we've got our own recipe for happiness, and it doesn't involve negativity. Happiness won't fill stomachs, Jennifer. You might want to think practically for once. After that meeting, I decided never to invite my stepmom to any events. We decided to have a quickie wedding in Vegas. Finally, when I did see my dad, I told him about the conflicts I had with my stepmom. He looked pale and I asked him what was wrong. Because he was a heavy smoker, he admitted to me that he had cancer and was told he had a few months to live. My stepmom overheard this and she asked him out loud to buy a life insurance policy, which he did the next day. My dad told me to get along with everyone and it wasn't too long when he got sick and passed away. The funeral was attended by 500 people and she ensured that it was an extravagant one with lots of food for the attendees. I was surprised when she sent me the bill for $10,000 
which was to cover all the funeral-related expenses. I wanted to take home a few mementos of my dad, but she would only allow me one hour to take a few items. Most of the other items were taken away by other relatives. I managed to pick up a few ties and his favorite mug he used for his trucking job, but even that turned into a conflict. I'd really like to keep dad's favorite mug as a memento. It means a lot to me. Well, Jennifer, I'm thinking of keeping it. Your dad gave it to me, you know. He did, but he always said it was his favorite mug. He might have said that, but it was a gift to me. I think I'll keep it. But I really wanted something to remember dad by. Please, let me have the mug. It's not like you appreciated him when he was alive. Why would you care about a silly mug now? It's not about that. I just want something to remember him by. Well, you can find something else. This mug is staying with me. Leaving my stepmom with the mug, I was mad. I didn't want to see her again. Later, they read Dad's will, and it was a big surprise. I thought Dad didn't have much, but turns out, he left everything to me. The house, a lot of money, and some other stuff. It was way more than just a mug. My stepmom fainted when the lawyer said it, and her sons had to help her. What made the whole day memorable was that my dad had a letter read out in which he accused his new wife of infidelity. As part of his last will, he asked his lawyer to read the letter. Dear Karen, I suppose now you may be shocked and unhappy that I'm leaving you with nothing. This is because, over the last few years, you have made my life difficult and unpleasant. You gave me massive credit card bills for jewelry and other expenses when I was on the road. When I started coughing and getting sicker, you told me to keep on working and to forget about seeing the doctor. Finally, when I could no longer stand, someone from work took me to the hospital where the doctor told me I had end-of-life cancer. If you had encouraged me to see the doctor sooner, things could have been different. Now, I am rewriting my last will to leave you out of everything. What was worse was that I found out that you were having affairs with different men. One day, I came home from work early and you accidentally left your computer open. I saw your profile on Tinder and that you were hooking up with lots of men. I was disgusted. Oh, and by the way, I changed the beneficiary of my $100,000 insurance to my only daughter. Sincerely, your happy husband, Eric. After the letter was read, my stepmom turned red and she didn't say anything. My two stepbrothers were both shocked beyond belief. With the inheritance, I could start a new chapter in my life. The first thing I did was kick my stepmom and stepbrothers out of the house. They begged me to let them live there for a few months until they found a place to live. But I wanted them out immediately and moved all their stuff to a local motel for two months. My stepmom asked me to find them permanent housing, but I eventually blocked all her text messaging and calls. I did the same to my stepbrothers and especially took great pleasure in removing their music tapes and other equipment from my house. As for myself, I used some of the money to have a bigger wedding and invited close friends and some distant relatives. I also invited my dad too and brought along a large picture of my dad to my church ceremony and my wedding reception. It was a wedding to remember. I don't communicate with my stepmom and stepbrothers anymore, but I hear my stepmom later married an abusive man who often beats her. They have mailed me a few letters that they apologized for their treatment of me. I chose to wipe them away from my memory and my life. What would you do?